you know, an interesting historical um, hip hop fact. So the late, great Christopher Wallace, um, you know, a lot of people think he's from Bed Stuy. St. James. He said um, the Lavas weren't from Bedford Stuyvesant. But his actual house um, is on a borderline and technically it's in Clinton Hills. Yeah, it's, it's not even it's not even on the borderline because it's safe. <laughs> I've it's, tried to give him the benefit of yeah, doubt. Rest in peace, big. Because you got Clinton six. Hills, get those stuff. You got he's like six blocks from Bed Stuy. Yeah, <laughs> little known fact. Exactly. So and um, the New York Post did a did a story because you know he said his his um his mom had the one room. It's not it's not it was never a one room shack. Not sure why he said that, but it's a um. <laughs> That same apartment right now is, rent, is renting for four thousand dollars a month. Yeah. yeah, and the New York Post did a, did a story about it because it's like you know he that became so synonymous because when he came out with that song, Juicy, Juicy, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When he was talking about it, he he literally chronicled that apartment, and that apartment today is literally I think it was like forty two. It might be like forty two hundred dollars a month for that same apartment that he used to live in back in the nineties. So it's so, crazy. So I'm I'm gonna take you back. To a, a true story back on Biggie's block, right? So this is like 2000, 2002, 2003. Um, again, um, I'm on the corner of St. James and, and Fulton, mm -hmm. you know, that little triangle over there. The same, I don't know if, if anybody ever saw that, um, like that. That freestyle Biggie was doing, yeah, uh, yeah, in front before. of the corner store, yeah, in front yeah, yeah, yeah. when they had the crates out, exactly, with, with, yeah. the, with the Tims on, with the, yeah. with the shorts, they put and, it in juicy too. They was doing the pull ups on it, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm on that corner. Mm. This is before I bought the cribs in Brooklyn. Mm. I'm on that corner, um, rolling dice because <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> dice shooter. <laughs> so we we out there, we rolling dice heavy. Like there's like. At, at least twenty dudes out there, all thugs, you know. Like, and I was comfortable out there because I. This is Brooklyn. Oh, so. oh, Brooklyn. <laughs> exactly. I'm I'm comfortable out there. This ain't, this ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's not hollow. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm out there rolling dice heavy, and there's a cipher. You know what I'm saying? There's like 20, 20 dudes all in a circle, and and dudes are smoking blunts, and 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 forty ounces, old old E and Saint Ives, and <laughs> one, one sec, one sec. Uh, for the people that are under twenty five, a forty ounce is an alcoholic beverage. So, <laughs> okay. that, that will give you cancer, <laughs> right? So we're we're in this cipher, like, and um, what happens was what happened was um, the dice are on the floor. Right and right in the middle, here comes this this um, white girl who's jogging with her headphones on, who runs right through the cipher, kicks the dice, mm. and and keeps it moving. No remorse. <laughs> <laughs> and and what what happened was when I looked around was that nobody said anything, but everybody nobody believed what just happened. Yeah. And that's when I knew that. This was her neighborhood now, and these mm. were the outliers. That's crazy, mm. right? That's the dice crazy. game changed your life. Yo, That's crazy. On a positive, on a positive <laughs> side now. That's exactly, because I, I looked at it, I looked at it, and it was just like, yo, she just kept it moving, like no fear in her heart, no nothing, and the dude, and nobody say nothing to her. Whose role was it? Yours? <laughs> 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 but um, that's when I knew. That's when I. That's when I started looking at that area a little differently. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's when that's when things changed for me over there. That's when, um, you know, I got um, I got this this philosophy right that the, the only way you make money is when you're able to see things that other people can't see. So when you see opportunities that other people can't see, right? Um, and the other thing I always say is like when you do things that other people are not willing to do, right? So um, at that little dice game. It opened my eyes and I was able to see something, you know what I'm saying? I was able to see um, change coming. You know, it's just like like very early in those days, like um, I never I never did a um, marketing analysis, you know, to to check the to check the dem the, the demographics to see what people were mm -hmm. making and 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 what what you know the money was like in the neighborhood and what was coming, right? So what I used to do um, a poor man's marketing analysis, which is, I would just look to see what what businesses were coming in the neighborhood, right? So, like, if I saw if I saw a Starbucks opening mm. up, I was just like, yo, I need to be around here. 
because like it's, it was like copying somebody else's homework because yeah. you know they did their marketing analysis. Yeah. So if they if they felt comfortable enough coming into this neighborhood, then I should feel comfortable enough to start investing in this neighborhood. Exactly. So when I saw, um, like I, I initially, I initially, um, like you're familiar with Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So it, it basically like the big money was Fort Greene. Then, um, then the next big money was Clinton Hills. And then the next big money was bed mm -hmm. Right. So, um, I got in, I got in on, on the Clinton Hill side, mm -hmm. like when it, you know, when it was still a little, there's still a little bit money to be made. Right. So when I saw, when I saw like, um, like these coffee shops, and and the, the tea store that's on Biggie's block now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's, on the corner of his block, there's a tea store. No more, no more bodega. The, no. Cra the crazy thing is, like people like they, the New York Post. It's a great article for anybody if they want to read it. And they was interviewing um, like the neighbors. It's like it's like all hipsters and tech people. And they like, yo, it's hard to even imagine those lyrics that he rapped about now, like on this block. Like it was, it would be hard to to imagine that. Like this is so far. And I remember even like Fort Greene, like. When I was young, because like when I was young, I used to play basketball and you know going to like Gauchos and Riverside and all the guys from Brooklyn and meet guys from Fort Greene, and um, that's the first time I ever heard about Fort Greene, and it was different. <laughs> like, you, know what I'm saying? But you know, you know who don't get no love for being on that block? Who's that? Um, who you know who else was on that block? I don't. Um, Saint James between Gates and Green, Chub Rock. Chub Rock. Oh, shout out to Chub Rock. Legendary. Legend. <laughs> yeah. Legend. Most people That's where he's from? That's his block right across the street from yeah. Big. Got overshadowed. Yeah. It's a big shadow. Big is a big shadow. Exactly. Chub Rock. Another wow. big man that could rap. Yeah, that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Chub Rock. Legend. Yeah, I think that's the first time I heard Nas when he was on like back in the Gorilla Games. I think Chub Rock was on the record. I was like, who's this guy? Talking about you waving automatic guns at nuns. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. What's up, y'all? It's the fourth quarter. It's a new month. And what better way to start it than to come in to join us at EYL University? Yes, the fourth quarter is where star players make a name for themselves. So come and join the number one roster. EYL University is the biggest platform for business in the universe. We have over 70 past classes, weekly classes. We have a private investment group on Facebook, which gives you access to our movie club, our book club. We also have bi-weekly real estate calls with MG, the mortgage guy, and monthly financial advising calls with none other than yours truly. Uh -huh. So head over to EYLUniversity.com right now and enter promo code EYL for 40% off of our annual membership. That's right. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Head over. We'll see you on the other side. Let's do it. You see the gentrification taking place. You have the um, the moment in the dice game where it's like, and that's a good point that you bring up too, because it's like, it's unfortunate, but I, nobody should have crime brought upon them. Nobody. But like you see in neighborhoods, like we'll commit crime against each other all day. But you never commit crime against anybody that doesn't look like us. Even Nipsey Hussle said that, like, we program to actually go and train to hunt and, and do violence and disrespect people that look similar to you. But when you see somebody that looks opposite to you, you're not even going to play around with that because you're scared, really, like, yeah. of repercussions that come with that. Yeah, the consequences. Yeah, serious consequences. Mm -hmm. So you saw that happening in your brain, so you're like, all right, did you want to just double down? Like, now I got to actually really double down on my investment strategy and buy these properties before it's too late? It, you know, I, it, it'd be very easy for me to tell you right now that, yo, I had this master plan, right? <laughs> and I saw that and this is how I was going to execute and this is the plan and this was the roadmap that got, nah, son. You know? Just happened. It, it's happening. You're, 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 you know, like, that's the beauty of, like, um, when people come on these podcasts, right? Um, everybody, chrono, you know, wants to chronologically Chrono, chronolog I can't say the word. Chronologically. Chronologically define everything that they did right, but nobody highlights all the mistakes and the dumb shit that they did. And all, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of mistakes were made. Um, like, it worked out. At, at some point, I saw it. You know, like, in the last 10 years, I, I've, you know, it's been crystal clear. But I was still trying to figure it out, still trying to... What's some of the mistakes that you made? Because you're right, people can learn. Just like they learn from information, they can also learn from mistakes. What's some of the biggest mistakes that you made? Um, a lot of the cribs that I sold. 
Mm. Too early? Sold them too early. Um, like 184. Oh, you still got the address in your head? 184, <laughs> 184 Madison, right? Um, so 184, no, 184 B Madison. Um, I bought that crib for like $400,000 when it was worth $700,000. And I sold it. I sold it for um, $900,000 in, in a few months. And I, at that time, I thought I was like the smartest dude in the world, you know, because I copped that joint. And I, I, there's a story behind that joint, too. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>